yeah, man. So I started um, in beginning, middle of October, um, mm-hmm. just in like, that's like the, the summary. And yeah, just to yeah, start, like, I guess, how, how has the, the pro- program been so far for you? I guess in like in a sh- one or two sentences. Um, I think that one of the things that the program has provided me with is the ability to focus more on mm. like the content of my own like language equipment. I think that when I first started learning Chinese, I worried way too much about grammar and this kind of other gr- structural stuff about the language. Mm. But since I go in, I, I found out that that it's way, way more effective to focus perhaps on uh, acquiring vocabulary and have the tools necessary to to actually like communicate. Mm. Mm. Uh, one of the small wins, I, I, well, it's not small because it, it's a big opportunity. So when I first started the course, I was I was already like doing an internship for the for the embassy. I don't know if you remember, I told Yeah, 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 um, very vividly. Uh, uh, in March, when it was like the, the review time, I, I went through this like assessment period. And depending on that assessment period, I was going to be told if I was going to enter the, the official uh, the official process of, of working for them. Okay. So in, what happened in March is that um, one of the factors that they factored in is the ability to speak Chinese. Even though I, I still don't have like the, the most fluent Chinese in, in, in the world uh the the yeah. things i i was able to um, to communicate at that uh, at that point in in time in march was enough for them to 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 get me into get get me through the process so right now even though i'm not officially in uh they're going to they're they're starting to test me i'm i'm still like working for them but i'm starting in a trial period that's going to last till the end of the year and that's gonna like determine whether I I get it I forget finally in Dude. or not. But the the thing is that in March was like the the first phase of this process and and and, I, and what I've been able to acquire in Chinese uh, was a factor that let let me in. So that's one of the the first wins. That I wow, that's I like the thing I was most curious about. Like if you I remember you said March was like the deciding period. So what did you get exactly? Like you got the the job you wanted or oh i i go into the into the official processes i'm telling you so oh, okay. uh I, I still don't got like officially the job so uh that, that that's one of the things that i'm still waiting for yeah but it but at least i got through one of the process that was like necessary for it and one of the factors that they can that the measure was like the the language acquisition so, okay that's one of nice, the things man. Mm. nice man uh another thing that i could say okay. uh has also happened is um, I've been able to 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 write in Chinese. I never thought this was anywhere close possible uh, because I remember when I started with you guys, I was like focusing on handwriting and this kind of stuff, mm. and I tried to learn the characters and so on. But um, with the different coaches, with different teachers, I realized that um, even though it's not useless to learn to write in Chinese. Sometimes you have to focus more on the vocabulary and you have like the technological um, like advantages of a computer mm. that already like give you the, the characters. So I've been able to recognize characters to, to write them and uh, to type them on the computer. Uh, even though I'm not like 100% sure of how to write them by hand, I've been able to to write long paragraphs, long texts, long conversations wow. in, 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 in on the computer and... And I think that's when I look wow. at them, I, I I think to myself, well, this is great. I never thought that I was going to be able to do that. So, wow. Wow. I'm super curious. Like, if you remember, what, what were you doing before to try and learn to write or do that? Oh, I was, what, what, what I, changed? Was very tra- I was very traditional. I, I, I always thought that, okay, you have to write by hand because um, maybe the knowledge sticks better to, 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 to your mind. And Maybe there's some truth to it. I think there's some truth to writing by hand. But mm-hmm. the issue that I was having is that I wasn't going fast enough. But I think that mm. the 
uh, the adaptability that writing fast, learning fast, and reviewing fast enough you know, is already, as as Jife once explained, it gives it gives us like uh, an a tool to to flatten that learning curve that tends to slope downwards. So I wow. think that uh, writing on the computer uh, has helped me like get over this habit of writing everything by hand and going too slow in the process, getting frustrated and so on. Uh, nice. So yeah, I think that that's what I did before. I was completely obsessed with writing by hand, like hey, having everything correct, writing, and then yeah. I realized some some Chinese don't even write that much. Uh, Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's fascinating, and mm -hmm. and that's often our taught taught in school. But it, like like you said, there is some truth to it. Like writing, like for sure, it's mm -hmm. creates a brain to hand connection that's pretty strong. But the thing is that it's so slow. And especially like if you're having to like look at the character then try and write it and like especially yeah for none people have never written anything outside of the latin alphabet it's, it's so slow that's why yeah changing it is powerful so yes apart, apart from the, the writing side like where were you i guess before october um and where are you now i guess what what yeah where were you before there and what did you want to achieve in terms of in terms of speaking or yeah like right. conversational side oh okay uh, i remember I, I will never forget that first speaking clinic um okay the conversational club you guys have the um, the, the first one i remember i caught um the, there were like a couple of of guys it was i think four people counting me it was very small uh -huh. at the beginning. yeah and I, I I was with this guy from Barcelona, and, okay. yeah, and and what I was so intimidated because everyone was speaking their full Chinese, and I was like, oh, what is going on? Uh, what did I get into?" Mm. So I got into this. Uh, we had to we had to mimic the conversation that uh, we thought uh, uh, a couple of passengers were having in an airplane, if I'm not mistaken. And when I got into into the small rooms with this person, because we have to do we had to do it uh, in pairs, I remember um, I remember him speaking Chinese, but it wasn't like the best Chinese in the world. He was also learning. He was also a student, but I was just so scared, and I, and I didn't understand him at all. <laughs> I was like, no, I I can't get through this conversation, and it wasn't even complicated that much. Yeah, and. I remember that I I just I just gave in and I started talking Spanish to him. Just I know he's from Barcelona. He has the Spanish name, so I know I knew he spoke Spanish. And I was like, man, I, I'm lost. I need you to help me out. And then I remember that uh, that time G Fake got into the call and she said like, okay, no no Spanish, no English, like stick <laughs> to Chinese. And I was like, I can't. I mean, I I, I literally cannot do it. And I remember I was very frustrated after that speaking mm. club. But then eventually after each speaking club, even though it's a very stressful experience from a social viewpoint, because you're always exposed. I mean, it's always good to get yourself out there and mm. try to make mistakes in front of other people. And, and even though no. I still have a long way to go, I think that uh, nowadays compared to when I started, I'm able to communicate basic stuff like uh being able to to understand other people talking yeah and even if i don't understand something i'm able to say hey i didn't get that specific part of what you said can you can you rephrase that and things that i never thought was possible uh, mm. started with this guy from barcelona i was like yeah wow so, How, so now the speaking clinics yeah, yeah, yeah of course go for it speaking, speaking things have been like a huge help uh, especially because you have a lot of interaction and you don't have that on a daily basis. Mm. Um, one of the things I eventually realized and that I, now I'm able to do is to correct sometimes other people. And as new people have been onboarding the program, uh, I see myself like, uh, well, I, I don't know if this is true, but it's like a personal opinion. I think that when some people have been onboarding the program, I, I'm able to see that, okay, I already know this. 
they still don't know that. So I think that I'm that guy from Barcelona before. Uh, so I'm I'm not wow. the equivalent to the Barcelonian guy uh, in the in their case. Oh, that's like so people, cool! But have been on boarding. So just as this bar, uh, guy from Barcelona didn't have all the tools still, but he was he was way more fluent than I was at the time. So I think that be, being able to see that in other people now, and it's, well, it's a sign of encouragement, of course. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's so, so fun to hear. I know like a month ago, I think when, whenever Jiffy had her, had a, was hosting a speak clinic, she was like, and she saw you, she was like, wow, Christian has improved so much. Like, yeah, just the incredible, the level of speaking and understanding has been really powerful mm-hmm. and super visible. That's the thing. Often I, I speak with people that are really shy, actually, like here, maybe you can help me out here. Um, like I speak with like speaking and being shy to speak is something that people struggle with a lot. Um, I think you were not like super shy, but like you saw you reverted to Spanish very easily. Hmm. But some people are like just shy to like even open their mouth in Chinese. Like what would you tell a person who's feeling shy about speaking? Um, and what like either what do they need to do or what, how did you overcome, I guess, that, that, that fear? And to... I think the main barrier that people, that shy people in, or people in general face when yeah. they're in this kind of environments, highly competitive, because especially in Chinese learning, because mm. you see everyone learning English. I mean, it's not that English is not complicated in itself. I'm yeah. saying that you're more prone to see average people learning english mm. but when you see a group of people learning chinese or that's what i've been able to see you see that all of these have this uh, same characteristic of same traits they're all like high achieving individuals mm. in their own uh, areas and when you when you come across this kind of people you you cannot help but wonder like i'm going to screw up in front of them I think yeah. the main the main barrier to these kind of people, to shy people uh, or people learning Chinese in general, is that they're gonna always be thinking the mm. person in front of them is gonna judge them because they're all so mm. high achieving. They expect you to already mm. know. So I think my advice is, uh, well, the piece of advice that I could give them is. Uh, no matter how fluent the people at a class or at any social environment looks like yeah they're all they're already struggling with their own stuff they're still learning a lot of things along the way and i it was very hard for me to understand this at first because mm. when i got into speaking clinic the first times not only with this guy from barcelona i i i had to i had to i had to meet a lot of people high achieving people and then I had the opportunity to, to, to follow them on social media. And I realized that they were still struggling with Chinese. They felt just as frustrated as uh, insecure about speaking mm. about everything. Even though I like put them on this pedestal uh, and I thought they were going to judge me. So my advice is like, even the people you think that are sure about themselves are not. And if you are, and if you give yourself the chance to talk to them and tell them like, okay, I didn't get that part or I didn't understand that. None of them, none of them are gonna, <laughs> none of them are gonna hammer you uh, to the wow. ground. None of them are gonna tell you, you should know that because they're not even sure themselves yeah. <laughs> because they're all learning. Yeah, I, I remember that I was like, so um, intimidated by this person uh, in the course. And this person always seemed to know what to say. Mm. And then I have one question like, Hey, but what's the difference between these two, these two words? In what cases you use them? Mm. Like, and he was like, uh, "I'm not sure. Uh, I, I just use it, but I'm not sure." Like, then you realize that these people are also learning. These people are also struggling, and they're gonna help you along the way. That the, the answer I got from this person was like, "I don't know, but let's write it down and let's wait for, for the t- teacher to come back so we can both know what it is." For, uh, in the meantime we can use this word that i use uh and i was like okay with that and i realized that nice. okay this is a learning process and the main barrier is thinking that other people is going to judge you but in fact everyone is learning and everyone usually usually people is wow. is, is super uh, accepting and helpful 
Wow. Yeah. You're inspiring, man. But, uh, what I uh, also often think of is like, yeah, we're all just human in the end. Like we all have our fears and our dreams and yeah, people have their own yeah. shit too. Yeah, what, yeah. One of the things that uh, this goes especially for people who, who are thinking of enrolling mm. in Xiaowa Chinese is uh, one, one of the nice things about the coaches is that you can interact with, in, well, you, you don't interact per se because it's not so personal, but you can see in social media their lives. And you see that mm. even the coaches that are professional in what they do are still struggling in their own language learning in other in other languages. Like being able to see, for example, Jife, like trying their own strategies in, in Portuguese and also getting frustrated and also spending a bunch of yeah. time re reviewing flashcards. I mean, you know them that more than I do. So knowing that she, as my coach or my teacher, is going through that, I mean, that's not only inspiring, but also helpful in the process because sometimes one mm. tends to think that teachers because they're Chinese they already know the language they know what's to to learn a, a second language yeah. that is that difficult but then you see people like Dolores learning Japanese then you see um people like Jifele in Portuguese and having yeah. Spanish or I think Wei Xuan is trying to learn Spanish as well so you yeah. can see that they're also human beings and that's something that Xiaowei Chinese like also provides like the the, the proximity to the teachers mm. and that they're still struggling too that's awesome man mm. yeah not just being a a place where the teachers are just teaching what they've learned years ago but actually still implementing and improving mm. right yeah. yeah one of my other other questions is like what's something that you've in, enjoyed it's not, you've mentioned a lot of things that you've enjoyed but what enjoyed about the way you're learning now if anything comes to mind mm. i think the the um, the clarity um in regards to um to what you should be studying mm. uh how so la language language learners tend to study everything all the once like the movie everywhere everything all the oh, yeah. once. uh pretty nice movie uh go watch it if you <laughs> if you haven't watched it i watched um, it yeah mm, so for example mm, language learners try to consume as much as they can and that's not wrong but sometimes mm. they lack uh, a proper instruction on, on mm. where the process is going uh, and one of the things that I've enjoyed is that uh, from day one, uh, Jifei was like, okay, we need to set these kind of goals. This is your, this is your, your main goal. This is your mini goal. Uh, and this is going to be your schedule. And even though the schedule is not set in stone, because most people have their own lives or their own yeah. problems, you, you kind of get a, a sense of when to study. Like these days you need to study your vocabulary these days you need to study your grammar mm. these days your shadow box you have to practice your speaking and so on so mm -hmm. uh, i think that uh having that structure uh quite uh, clearly like laid out in front of you is very helpful and one of the things that i've enjoyed because uh, teachers and coaches alike know like this is wow. what he should be doing and, and and that structure like gives us a certainty as, as, as students so that's one of the things i've enjoyed regarding that. nice nice hmm. apart apart from getting the certainty having the structure what did that do for your like learning speed or learning or your level of speaking that you're able to get to do you think um like what uh, what has that uh, yeah the structure what did do? that how did that oh, okay. how did that help okay mm. well it, it's made it's made wonders i mean maybe as as months go by you don't find it that interesting anymore mm. but in the first months it's very crucial to have that discipline because it makes you realize that you're able to do things you couldn't you didn't think they were possible before for example um I remember when I got into the course, Jifa told me like, okay, there is a, lot, a complete lack of vocabulary here. Like we need to fix this. And I saw uh, other students like reviewing their flashcards in a, a slower fashion. Mm -hmm. And 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 Jifa told me like, you have to go an, an extra mile because you're, you're lagging a bit behind them. So you need to 
you need to acquire 2000 words in a month or a month and a, and a half. And I was like, that's not even possible. I mean, that, that's, 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 that's not. And it seemed not at, yeah. the, at, uh, uh, at the beginning, but then with the structure, with the clearly laid out structure, I realized that if I like dedicated enough time every day to reviewing the flashcards, I was able to go through thousands of words in a week. I mean, able to review thousands and thousands of words over a, a month span, and yeah. even though that's crazy, uh, hmm, and even though of course there are still some words that, uh, just like in English, we sometimes like forget and yeah. and get lost when we're speaking. Uh, at least when I see like the the two thousands and something words that are in the in the decks in the in the Quizlet flashcards. I'm able to recognize most of them, if not all of them. So wow. I, I thought that this was gonna be like really impossible, but when I was like by week three, if I'm not wrong, I was already like amazed that I was going through more than a thousand words in, in such a short period of time. And I think that the, having that structure made me realize that it's all about, it, it's all about organizing one's time effectively, because it's not like I spent four hours continuously reviewing flashcards but it yeah. was more of a um more about finding the time to review the flashcards maybe when you're on, in in traffic when you're on the bus when you're on, like buying groceries and mm. you have your earphones and you just play the flashcards and, and you go on and, on. Wow. and having all your family telling you what are you doing now? reviewing chinese <laughs> It's, it's very funny. I had the doctor appointment and we're waiting. And I, what are you doing? Reviewing my flashcards. And, and like finding that kind of uh, moments uh, helped me realize that, yes, in three weeks is possible to acquire a thousand words or more. Wow. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's what I would uh, add. Mm. Right, right. And how much time would you spend on average, I guess, on a weekly basis, do you think? Well, uh, it's even though even though this the the structure course is designed for you to not spend that much time studying, I have like this uh, great passion for learning. And it's not yeah, yeah. only in Chinese. I, I just sure. love overspending time. <laughs> learning. I think so, plus the extra yeah. push in the beginning probably. Mm. Yeah, had, had so, you spend more time. Yeah, I, I, for example, in in a week, I'm able to spend around, I think, twelve hours studying or more. Mm. So that's an average of two hours a day. Yeah, between flashcard reviewing or uh, grammar or writing for my for my classes and this kind of stuff. So yeah, I would say around twelve or more hours a week. All right, all but right. yeah. Hmm. But it can be done also in, in less. You were just of, oh yes, yeah. of course. As I as I yeah. told you, the structure is made. You, you could just as easily get results. Uh, I mean, in the first weeks, I was very busy. In the, the first three weeks that I I mentioned, I was very busy, so I didn't have time to go through two hours a day. Mm. And and because it was also very frustrating, I was starting, so everything was even harder for me. For sure. So, so and during the first weeks, I according to the structure of the program you're able to just spend around half an hour a day or 45 minutes a day like well spent or even less and that totally. should be like well enough for you to advance throughout the course hmm. awesome awesome i love love your passion for sure and yeah hats off to like putting in the effort hmm. yeah and so what would you tell someone i guess who's like considering jumping in considering joining was maybe on the fence and has probably um, been learning for like for years like many students have i would tell those people try to think about what you're going to be doing in eight to one year and a half try to picture yourself professionally wherever you want to be and try to think try to think in uh, when you're at that time without learning Chinese, what exactly you're going to be doing. So in my case, what I would have been doing, for example, I would have most likely <laughs> not, not, not passed this first filter for, for the job. And I wouldn't have the connection with the people in the embassy if I had not started mm. as well. 
Um, and probably right now would be trying to get another way to get into the into the into the diplomatic career mm. uh, without the language. And I will be already frustrated about about my own my ability to only speak two languages, even though yeah. having a language is already a really good thing. But for yeah. my career, it's not so. Um, when I think about it, I just can see how grateful. I, I really am of having uh, of having taken that step. I remember when I was considering when I was on the fence. Um, I just told my wife, and I think you're you're, you're a witness to this. I told my wife like, okay, this is crazy expensive for someone uh, yeah. uh, from this country because I know that it's it's manageable for other people. But almost for uh, let's say for for other people uh, in, in in countries like mine. Uh, where the, the 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 minimum wage is not not usually that high. I was like, we can't do that. I mean, we have things to pay. We have, and and she told me like, you need to get guidance from someone who knows the how. Once once you once you once you know about someone who knows how to do it, you can do it. She told yeah. me, let's give it a shot. It doesn't matter how much it costs. I know that you have the the passion. You have the discipline. You're gonna try it as hard as you can. Even if you were to fail, like you, you don't know what your life is going to be in eight months wow. or one year. And yeah. I think that when I look, when I look back, I, I, it's, it's such a funny, like, I don't know, uh, anecdote, because right mm. now I think what would have been uh, without the Chinese course this, yeah. this past few months. I, I mean, I would, I would still be at the level I was. Uh, I wouldn't be even considering things I'm considering now, which yeah. is like getting a like a full-time career in this um trying to focus my career in just like east asia and knowing that the predominant diplomatic language is like english and chinese yeah uh, i mean i would be very frustrated right now <laughs> so for the, for those people who are still considering try to think mm. all of the things you're gonna miss out if you don't take like the the opportunity I think there is a term right now about this. It's called FOMO. I don't know if you've heard of it. FOMO. FOMO. But like fear of missing out. Like I know that usually FOMO yeah. is not a good thing. But in this case it is. Because yeah. you don't know what you're gonna be missing if you don't if, if you don't get if you don't get enrolled. So it's yeah. totally worth it. I know that one has a lot of doubts at first, not only money related, but yeah regarding the the, the efficiency and the professional factor of the teachers because there nowadays there are a lot of Chinese teachers out there, mm. a bunch of them. And you're all as a user, as a consumer, you're always like wondering, is this the right one? Is mm. this the right? Is this the one that is gonna give me results? Yeah. Well, to those people on the fence, just uh from my own experience, I would tell you go jump in and you're, wow. you're not going to regret it. You're not going to regret it at all. In eight months, in one year, you're going to see results. You're going to be able to be doing things that you never thought was possible in this language. Wow. That some people consider is the hardest. I don't know if that's true, but uh, it's yeah. very complicated. Uh, yeah, just wow. go go for it. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm very inspired. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. You mentioned FOMO, like if, if I could just share like a, another frame on that. Oftentimes people think of ROI, so the return on the investment, and people forget about the COI, which is the cost of inaction. And that's like the, the mm. FOMO, like what, do you, what's, what is it costing you to not take the action, to not make the decision? Because I always consider these like when making big decisions, right? Yeah. Just so you have that, yeah. Yeah, the cost, of, the cost, of, uh, the cost of inaction is, it's pretty high, <laughs> mm. very high. Mm. Yeah. 